I'm going to make uh, a product I was going to make first thing this morning, but we had to move the schedule around uh, a little bit. I was going to make you a breakfast ice cream called Grape Nuts. Grape Nuts Ice Cream. I got it. Didn't sound very interesting to me at first until I did some research on it. Uh, you remember Grape Nuts. It's what our, uh, all our fathers used to eat. You know, the stuff is horribly crunchy. I'd send it to my friends after they'd had uh, their wisdom teeth out just for fun. And um, it's a very crunchy cereal, and it's a very popular ice cream up in New England. And I never heard of it down here. I never heard of it in New York. But I did some research on it, and I found out it was first made in 1909 in Newfoundland, up in you know, the Canadian border. And um, very popular way back then, and it spread down through New England and is a very popular flavor in New England. And then it seems to have jumped completely from New England down to the Caribbean. And in Jamaica, they uh, said, well, the grape nuts is great, but let's add something that we have a lot of in the Caribbean, in the South, and that's bananas. So let's add some bananas to the grape nuts, and I call it a, the perfect breakfast. You know, second only to beer, it's, it's, it's a wonderful breakfast. So we're going to make grape nuts with uh, bananas in it. Make sure the gate's closed. Just pour your dairy in. I'm going to just, there's a little safety guard here that moves out of the way so you don't put your fingers in the machine. And you just pour that in. Okay. Now, I'm going to add uh, some vanilla to this. Uh oh. Here she is. Hi, Sadie. Okay. Does anybody see the squeeze cups? Yeah, put them behind, behind you. Put them behind. Here. Here. Right hand. Right hand. Right hand. Oh, right there. Great. Thanks. Now I'm going to follow Jeff's rule. He puts an announce to a quart. A quart. So I just put in three and a half ounces. I've got five quarts, so I need another ounce and a half. This really makes a difference. This may, this really changed my ice cream. When Jeff said that I made horrible ice cream, he's no, I didn't say you made horrible. Well, ice you're cream. technically correct. I said it was awful ice cream. Oh. <laughs> okay, he says I make awful ice cream. Uh, actually, I make great ice cream, and we have at our website. What is it now, Ken? 51 or 52 videos? 52 videos on YouTube that you can get to from emerythompson.com of different flavors. You can see how to make different products. Plus, there's about 40 hours of this banter back and forth of me and Jeff showing you up here how to make different products. And um, there's one little secret about those videos, which I like to tell people I did this on purpose. You watch those and you learn and you come away with the same impression that Jeff did. If that idiot can make ice cream, imagine <laughs> what I could do. Well, I didn't plan it that way, it just came out. Uh, I am not as great an ice cream maker as he. So we've got our vanilla in and we've got our mix and I'm gonna start this up. I'm gonna take this up, uh, well, we're at full speed. I'm gonna run it at that. And then I'm gonna pour in my grape nuts. Hi, sweetie. Can they see her on camera? I didn't want the audience to think I was getting, uh, you know, over overt with one of the ladies in the audience. You know, I was saying hi, sweet, because Paul is watching. Uh, I was saying hello to the dog. And just pour them in. Don't try this with any other machine. They'll void your warranty because their barrels aren't as thick as ours. Ours are six times thicker than anyone else's. And you don't want to go uh, ruining the barrel and the drive system. But it sure won't hurt our machine. Now comes the fun part. You physically can't do this with any other machine on the market because their openings up here narrow down to about that much. You have to puree everything before you throw it in the machine. Now, I was asked uh, during the break about bananas. And I have an interesting story about bananas. Um, I had a hard time getting these uh, ripe because bananas in the supermarket are green and so I had to 
push these to uh, ripen. But even so, that banana is perfect for eating right now, but it's not the best for ice cream. Uh, the best bananas for ice cream is the more ripe they get, the sweeter they are, the more intense the flavor. So if these bananas were brown and ugly, uh, they would be much better for the ice cream. They would be a much more intense flavor. So I think I'm really smart, and I go to the public supermarket, the big chain down here in Florida, and I say to the green grocer, uh, you know what, those brown bananas, you can't sell them. Nobody wants them. Give them to me for half price. And he goes, okay, fine. So I put that on a tape, and I get a call from uh, Gary of Gary's Ice Cream up in Chelmsford, Mass. And Gary says, oh, you think you're so smart? I go to the green grocer, and I say, and I say to the green grocer, you not only can't sell those brown bananas, but you're going to have to throw them out and they're going to take up space in your dumpster, which is going to cost you money. I'll let you pay me to take those bananas off your hands. There you go. Boy, I've, I've met a master. Do we have a spatula I could use? A spatula? Uh, you know, the plastic ones. The yeah, right tip. here. Thank you. What's this for? That's to throw away? We have garbage cans here. Well, it looks here. bad when I throw them on the ground. We have garbage cans here. <laughs> like you said, I build machines. That's my job. You, does your job include, do you have an ice cream scoop anywhere? An ice cream scoop? I just said that. <laughs> There's an echo in here. You have an ice cream scoop? Uh, maybe, Paul. Yeah, I thought we saw one this morning, right here. Oh, okay. Here. No, that's a spade. No, I got one. If this you're doing Bed Bath and Beyond, <laughs> yeah, probably. If you're doing Italian ices, these are great. Uh, a spade, maybe one less curved than that, because you can uh, get the ice, put it into the squeeze cup, and then shave off the four corners, and you uh, have a nice presentation. And they just feed right into the machine. You can't do this anywhere else. What are you making? Grape nuts ice? Cream? Grape nuts. Um, the reason it's important that I can put these in is we put, as I told you, Haagen-Dazs, Ben & Jerry's, Breyers, Bluebell, Hershey's, uh, you name it, we put them into business. And they did not start off as multinational corporations. They started off as ma and pa businesses. It was Reuben Madison, his mother, Ben Cohen and, and Jerry, I forgot Jerry's last name, and uh, Friendly's, all these people, Breyer, um, Baskin Robbins, uh, we have machines with. Um, all these people started off small and then they grew and they grew and they grew. Well, that's good and that's bad. I mean, they grow and the owners make a lot of money selling out to a big corporation and then they retire. I, I would go nuts. I am not going to sit on the beach for the rest of my life doing nothing. Uh, so I'm not ever going to go that route. But uh, as they get to a certain point, which is about 250,000 gallons a year, that's 250,000, that's a lot. They switch over to a machine that's made in the USA called a continuous freezer. It's a, sh a narrow tube, about like that, and it's from here to the wall, and it makes 1,000 gallons an hour. But it only makes vanilla. That's all it can do. You can't put anything into the machine. So they have at the end, here's all this ice cream coming out, 1,000 gallons an hour, and right here is a $40,000 machine uh, called a fruit feeder. And so it injects the flavor into the ice cream. So, if you were making strawberry ice cream batch versus commercial, the commercial ice cream is vanilla and then we're injecting strawberries into it. When you look in the container, yeah, it looks like strawberry ice cream. But when you make batch ice cream with an Emery Thompson and we're the only people that you can pour everything in, uh, for every particle of dairy mix, there is a particle of strawberry next to it or a particle of banana. So your flavor is going to be far more intense than any commercial ice cream. So what happens with a lot of commercial businesses uh, is they, they grow and they grow and they grow as homemade, and then they jump to commercial, and then people start going, oh, gee, I remember when that ice cream was uh, 10 years ago. It was much better than today. And what happens? One of you comes along and says, I can make a better homemade ice cream. It's the wheel of marketing. You get so big that all of a sudden someone comes in and says, I can do it the old-fashioned way. And they put you out of business, and then they start their journey on the wheel. Um, so our batch freezers are going to make you a better ice cream than anywhere else. Be simple fact, <laughs> because you can put everything in. 
And I think I've got everything in here I need. Let's see, we put in the uh, bananas and the vanilla and the grape nuts. That should do it. Okay. So you've got enough for your next thing. I'm all set. Any questions I can answer so far? Yes. Uh, I have what, a question. What did you, you say? They're like a, are you a painting or are you an audience? I have a, uh, my jokes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, the other person who made ices didn't measure, remember? You can say his name. Rod, he didn't <laughs> measure. Um, I, I advise against that. Uh, I thought that was incredibly too sweet and it had the potential for being a good product, but he didn't measure. Uh, in my books, in my, as a matter of fact, I would tell you all get index cards and uh, some of you will get to see how you make a recipe tomorrow, but when you get the recipe down, put them on index cards and then laminate the cards, keep them in a box file alphabetically. And when you're making ice cream, just take out it and go buy it. None of this eyeballing stuff because your customers, he goes to one ice cream parlor up in Boston and he wants their mint chip every summer. And damn, it better taste like it did last summer. And that's the same way with your ice cream stores. Yes? Uh, regarding the strawberries or cherries or peaches you put in, on a 20-quart memory comment pick, you're making a quart of batch of uh, peaches. What's your recommended um, ratio between putting the peaches in versus the mix? The question is how much uh, flavor do you put in? Um, I have some general rules for the way I make it, and like I said, I modified my vanilla according to Jeff, so I want to hear what he has to say after I speak. Uh, my general rules are on the 24 quart machine, which is two three gallon tubs. I put in um, two quarts of flavors. So if I'm using bananas, it's going to be uh, two quarts of uh, bananas, it's going to be two quarts of strawberries, and I put one quart into the machine for my fruit flavor. I'm blindfolded and I taste it and it's strawberry. Take the blindfold off and you don't see chunks. So I would add my second quart of strawberries as it's coming out because you see it and you eat with your eyes. So I have the fruit flavor and the fruit identity, but two quarts. If it's Oreo cookies, if it's chips, I'm using uh, two pounds. So two, two, and my old rule used to be if it was an extract, use a third more than the manufacturer says. Now I've changed it uh, to uh, an ounce a gallon, at least for vanilla. I'm, I haven't tested that theory with mint. It might be too strong. How do you, do you have any general rules that you do? Yes, uh, you, can't, you can't answer that question because I was talking to a guy during the lunch break and he's looking to go into the business and I said, do you have a passion for ice cream and do you know what good ice cream is? He said, no. And in my opinion, that's a big roadblock. I can only make ice cream the way I think it tastes good. You can't go by a book because what he thinks is good may not be what you think is good. Even my recipe books, I tell you, you know, taste it. Taste it before you finish the process. With these machines, I put everything in and I start it up and I'm continually putting a spoon in there, not the same spoon, and tasting it. And I can still vary the product, a little more sugar, a little more flavor, another banana, whatever it is. Uh, but if it's not what you think is good ice cream, don't sell it. Uh, it's just that simple. You have to develop a palate. There's a way to do that too, but that's another story. Can I borrow your file card for a second? Jeff was dead on uh, about the file cards. I, I have one extra thing I add about that, and that is regarding employees. Uh, you get to the point where your business grows, and you, you got to have a day off. You got to you know take a vacation. So you train a trusted employee how to make ice cream. Don't worry about stealing. Uh, don't worry about. Uh, them stealing your formulas, it's no big deal because they can go buy Jeff's book just like you did <laughs> and then they'll make it to their own personal taste. So there's no secret formulas locked up in a vault. But you've got it written down on a fi file card. Again, I said about McDonald's, uh, lousy hamburger but lousy no matter where you go in the world. We <laughs> want great and we want it great this year, last year, and, and next year. So you've got the cheesecake recipe all written down here. You're teaching someone how to make ice cream and the guy takes it upon himself <clears throat> to say, ah, Jeff, he doesn't know anything he's doing. He's putting in too much cheesecake. I'm going to cut back on it. He's just changed your formula, the one that all the customers love. 
if I find out about that, I, I tell the employee you're fired. No, excuse me. First we break his kneecaps, then we take him out into the street and we shoot him, and then we fire him because that will ruin my business if there's inconsistency. If this machine isn't as good as it was 40 years ago or better, I'm in trouble. Same thing with the recipe. So you teach people this is your recipe, you don't change it no matter what. I don't care what your taste is. This is my taste, this is what I like, and this is what we're going to sell. And you impart that on them and you just say, that's the only grounds around here for uh, getting fired. If the guy's got a girlfriend and he's talking on the phone and the machine freezes up and everything's gone to hell, you don't fire him. You say, listen, it's an Emory Thompson. We call Steve or we call one of his engineers. We'll get it up and running in five minutes. It's only a piece of machinery. Big deal. But if someone walks out and says, I don't like the ice cream, you're finished. Paul and I went to a restaurant the other night uh, over in Palm Beach, and the food was absolutely horrible. And we'd been going there for years. And I called up the, uh, the restaurant owner, and I told him what was wrong with it. He said, oh, I'm really sorry. Uh, my chef just walked out on me, and uh, that shouldn't have been served to you. I said, that's no excuse. I'm not coming back because you have only one chance every time I walk in to get it right. So Jeff's, with the uh, file cards, is really, really an important part of the business. Almost. Okay. Another, another minute. All right. <laughs> Are you guys <good> painting? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Uh, are you enjoying yourself? Don't eat too much of this ice cream because then I make something after this. Obviously better. Ah, good question, but let's talk about a little broader topic. Fresh fruit, frozen fruit. Forget the, the uh, jar stuff because, you know, I don't do that. But. I never use fresh fruit because it's inconsistent. Uh, I go to Restaurant Depot and I buy the bags of frozen fruit, frozen cherries, very expensive, but it is what it is. Uh, but at least every bag is going to be the same and those recipes that I make will be consistent. Uh, so I don't use uh, fresh fruit at all. You can use frozen fruit or you can use, uh, well, I don't use canned fruit, but anything that's consistent. Uh, I think frozen fruit's your best bet. The, uh, th this video goes out to uh, people in 172 countries, and so they don't really know everything that's going on in Florida. When I first went to school down here back in the uh, very late 60s, uh, early 70s, um, the orange crop, I found out, starts, the oranges start uh, turning ripe and show up on the market in late November, and it goes all the way to the end of March. In late November, those oranges are as bitter and awful as you can imagine. And in, in late March, they're like eating candy, they're so sweet. So a Floridian doesn't buy oranges uh, right now, they're, they're, they're too tart. So when you want to make, a, say, an orange cream ice, uh, I use Minimade frozen concentrate, uh, the country style, because it's got some pulp in it. Because what Minimade does, and what all your orange juice, when you buy orange juice in the supermarket, uh, it has been blended. They, they're not going to say, no, we won't buy the oranges in November. They take November, December, January, February, March, and they blend it all together so that they have a consistency of taste. So no matter when you buy Minute Maid or Tropicana, it always tastes the same. Um, you don't have that luxury with fresh fruit. Ice cream's ready. Okay. Some, uh, so we're going to turn off the refrigeration and open the gate. Um, as I mentioned before, strawberries are all over the place. And what happens in Florida, which drives us nuts, is all the good fruit gets sent north. We get all the seconds and thirds because they can get more money for uh, the fresh fruit, the fresh strawberries, the fresh oranges, the grapefruits. They can get more money in Chicago than they can in Tampa. So you saw how fast that came out. And this is at 100% uh, overrun. So that's the maximum amount of air. So you'll get to taste that and see what you think. And it's certainly going to be crunchy. The other thing about our machinery that's important is the discharge gates are very large. 
Um, other machines on the market, they have a very small opening or they have grids in the way. We do have a guard that goes on this machine uh, just like these. They're offset from the machine. Can you see that over here, Ken? They're off, the, all our guards are offset so they have no interfering with the product coming out. Let's say you're broiling a steak. You're broiling a steak. And uh, the steak takes eight minutes to be ready, medium rare, but it takes you four and a half minutes to pull it out of the oven. The first slice is medium rare. The last slice is charred because it continues to uh, cook. In this case, it continues to freeze for a bit, but it's also taking on a lot more air. So you end up with a tub that, uh, in a slow machine like that, like a Capigiani, this part of the ice cream's at 55% overrun, and this part is much higher because it's had so long in the machine. So just as important as being able to put nuts and cookies in, you want to get that ice cream out fast. What gets me, Jeff, is they use their negative and they say, oh, but it comes out so slow, you can decorate it as it's coming out. No, you That's want it baloney. out fast. You're ruining the product. <laughs> Come on up and try this. And I'll be first because I've never had it, and we'll see if it's edible. Oh, that's good. That is really good. Uh. Thank you.